A few months ago, I made a video talking about the Logitech G Pro Wireless. It's not only one of the best wireless mice out there, but one of the best mice, period. Sometime after that review, Logitech released the G Pro Wireless Ghost Edition, which was basically just a white version. Unfortunately, I wasn't fast enough to secure one, so I don't have one, and I refuse to pay the absurd premium to get it on the gray market. Okay, so why does this backstory matter? Well, not long ago, I was looking for a gaming mouse to replace my girlfriend's atrocious Corsair M65, but it had to be white to match the color scheme of her setup. After looking for weeks, it seemed like there were no good options. Razer has their Death Adder in white, but she said it was ugly, and to be honest, I, I agree. There's a bunch of other options from non-reputable brands, and then there is this, the Logitech G305 Lightspeed Wireless. Initially, my girlfriend wasn't a fan of the design of the G305, but after a few months of looking, it grew on her, so I got her one. Turns out, she doesn't like the dimensions, so now she uses my G Pro Wireless, and I use the G305 when we game. And because of that, I've been forced to use it for a couple of weeks in a competitive setting to see how well it performed compared to my G Pro Wireless, and to be honest, I gotta say, it impressed the competitive gamer in me, and spoiler alert, it's definitely a viable option for competitive use. At only $60, the Logitech G305 is Logitech's entry-level wireless gaming mouse. And even though it's two and a half times cheaper than the G Pro Wireless, it has similar characteristics and performance to the point where I feel most people would probably choose this over the G Pro Wireless. Because let's be real, most people don't want to spend $150 on a mouse unless you absolutely need the best of the best. What makes this so good then? Well, there are two main things. Number one is the sensor. It uses Logitech's Hero Optical Sensor, which, like the G Pro Wireless, claims to have zero smoothing, filtering, or acceleration. And it does live up to those claims. Response times are identical to any of the wired mice I'm used to, as well as my G Pro Wireless, which uses the improved Hero 16K sensor. Now, I'm not sure what the differences are between the 305's Hero Sensor and the G Pro Wireless's Hero 16K sensor, because that information isn't available anywhere on the interwebs. But, to be honest, they felt the same to me. Regardless, every flick I've ever made with this mouse is predictable, moving exactly where I would expect the mouse to move with zero acceleration and smoothing. This is also helped by the second thing that this mouse has, which is its weight, or lack thereof. At 97 grams, this is not the lightest mouse in the world, but it's also not the heaviest. It's easy to start moving if you need a flick, and easy to stop in its place rather than having your hand drag like with heavier mice. So this mouse is totally fine for competitive use. To give you some perspective on the weight aspect, let's take the most popular selling gaming mice from Amazon since I'm assuming some of you will be using that. In first place, we have the Pictech Wired Gaming Mouse. That mouse is 136 grams, so that's about 28% heavier if my math is right. It probably isn't though. And I don't know about you guys, but I've had a mouse that's about 120 grams and that was definitely not ideal. Speaking of which, at the number two spot, we have the Logitech G502 Wired variant which is 121 grams, so again, not ideal. And if you're one of those people that are using the Pictech or the G502, you don't know what you're missing. Then at the number three spot, we have the Logitech G203, which is basically a wired version of the 305 and weighs at about 85 grams. Now, yes, the 203 weighs 15% less and is cheaper than the 305, but trust me, you don't want a cable. At least, I wouldn't. Ever since I got rid of the cable, I can never go back especially since Logitech's Lightspeed technology has identical input lag to a wired mice, so there's really no point. Moving on to the smaller details about the mouse, you could take off the rear cover to find the much appreciated slot for the USB wireless receiver. I love mice that include this, because if you're traveling, you don't want to lose that receiver, otherwise you are SOL. Also in the rear of the mouse is a spot for the single AA battery, which is included. The battery is supposed to last about 250 hours before needing to be replaced, so you can use this mouse for about 8 hours a day for 31 days before needing to replace the battery. At least, that's what Logitech says. I've been using it for a month so far, and it says it still has a full battery. Now, being that this has a AA battery may be a deal breaker for some people, and it was for me at first. I loved the idea of having a built-in rechargeable battery like my G Pro Wireless. However, turns out I love the 305's battery configuration a lot more. When my computer is off, it still charges my G Pro Wireless, which is nice. However, one issue that I have with the mouse is that sometimes I just forget to charge it. And when I want to play something and the G-Hub software is telling me that my battery is low, 
I have to wait to charge it a bit because as I mentioned earlier, I just refuse to play with the cable. This is a non-issue with the 305 because I never need to think about charging it. It's either alive or it's dead and in need of a battery replacement. For me, this is not that big of a deal because I have rechargeable AA batteries, which by the way are cheaper in the long term than disposable batteries, so always go rechargeable. And all I need to do is swap the battery out, which takes less than 10 seconds, and I'm ready to go. No charging required. Now one thing I don't like as much though is the DPI switcher, which is right under the scroll wheel. My issue with it is that sometimes when I'm using the scroll wheel or even just adjusting the way I hold the mouse, I tap it by accident and move to the next DPI mode. This can easily be remedied though by just deleting the DPI button on Logitech's G-Hop software, so it's not really an issue. There are different colors to indicate which DPI setting you're on though, if you ever need to change it. The buttons themselves are pretty nice to push as well. At first I thought they were a little bit harder to press than my G Pro Wireless, but turns out that was just my imagination because when I checked how many grams of force each mouse required for a button press, the G Pro Wireless required 48 grams and the 305 required only 45 grams of force. Even after finding that out though, the G Pro Wireless still feels lighter to press, but that might have something to do with the way the button sounds. Regardless, like the G Pro Wireless, the G305 is easy to press but not too easy to where you're accidentally clicking them all the time. Now let's talk about dimensions. My hand is seven inches tall from my wrist to the tip of my middle finger, six and a quarter inches from my wrist to my index finger, and four inches from my thumb to my pinky. The mouse is a medium sized mouse at 4.6 inches long, two and a half inches wide, and one and a half inches tall, which is almost identical to the G Pro Wireless. However, that doesn't mean it's as comfortable to hold as a G Pro Wireless because it's not. The arch of the mouse is towards the rear rather than the center. Because of that, it's extremely difficult to palm or fingertip grip the 305 for long periods. The only thing I could do comfortably for extended periods was a claw grip. So if you have smaller hands, this won't be much of a problem. This mouse might actually be perfect for you. If your hands are similar to mine or larger, you'll probably be on the same boat as me. Lastly is build quality. It's all plastic like pretty much any other mouse out there, but high quality plastic, so it feels nice to touch. It doesn't feel like it's going to fall apart or break anytime soon, but only time will tell. So in conclusion, do I recommend the G305, and if so, who is this for? Well, unlike my other videos where I usually say, it depends. If you're looking for a good wireless mouse that won't break the bank, the G305 is a great option whether you're a competitive player trying to go pro, a casual pleb, or just using this for your home office PC. It feels nice, has good weight, has an ultra precise sensor, and has a long lasting battery life for a relatively affordable price. If you're looking to upgrade from your current crappy mouse and you don't want to spend a lot of money, the Logitech G305 is a great option for you. That's it guys, if you enjoy the video, please leave a like. If you hate it, you can leave a dislike. Consider uh, checking my Patreon, which should be somewhere in one of these. I'm not sure if I can even do that yet. Um, and consider subscribing, because trust me, you won't want to miss my upcoming Alienware versus other IPS 240Hz monitors when this pandemic is over. And follow me on my Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Those links will be down below in the description and in a pinned comment. As always, have a great day every day. Peace.